Hey guys, what is up? Super K Man Rocks here, and we have made it to the quarterfinals at Worlds 2023. It is time to see which team will move into the semifinals, the first team to be moving into the semifinals here at Worlds. I'm incredibly excited to get into this. First off, I don't want to plug too much at the beginning of this video, but if you want my thoughts on the quarterfinals and the draw for the bracket in general, go ahead and check out the video that I posted yesterday, which is my quarterfinals preview predictions video and my full bracket prediction for the rest of the tournament. You're going to know who I think is going to win today's series. I'm still going to go over it a bit at the beginning in terms of previewing it, but you'll get in-depth coverage on all three of the other series as well as a full bracket prediction on what I think is going to happen outside of that in this tournament. If you want my winner pick for Worlds, it's in that video. Go ahead and check it out. But today, we're going to be covering the first of the quarterfinals matchups, and this is one of the most interesting ones because it's probably the two weakest teams in the quarterfinals going head-to-head, -head, which is always fun. But of course, let me know what you guys wanted to see down in the comment section below. Did it go according to plan for you? Did you expect the series to play out in the way that it did? Or were you surprised by the outcome? Would love to know your thoughts and opinions on everything that happened down below. Of course, if you do find yourself enjoying the video at any point throughout this video, it really would mean a lot to me if you hit the like button. You don't have to do it now, but if you find yourself in 10, 15, 20 minutes enjoying the video, it really would mean a lot to me if you hit that button. It does help for the algorithm quite a bit. And hit subscribe so you can be notified when the rest of these videos go live. But that's enough pandering for the beginning of the video. It's time to jump into the actual analysis. Of course, today we are going to be covering our first quarterfinals matchup, which is between the number one seed from the LCS in Energy and the number four seed from the LPL in Weibo Gaming. Previewed this yesterday and went pretty in-depth on why I think this is a really fun matchup between these two teams. I really do think that this is the best possible draw for both of them because I think this is team number seven. And team number eight in the quarterfinals. I think both of these teams were more than likely to lose against almost anybody else that they went up against, but they both have a shot against each other, at least in my opinion. Now, worth noting, the first time these two played in day number one of this tournament, Weibo absolutely wiped the floor with energy. That is definitely something to keep in mind. Doko was on weak side on Orn uh, on the, in the top lane, which is never really what Energy wants to play around, and Palafox had a pretty miserable game. But outside of that, you know, Contracts played okay. FBI and Ignar certainly survived in the bot lane. They actually looked really good in that game in isolation. But there are still a lot of question marks coming out of that. Palafox has gotten better over the course of this tournament, and Contracts has certainly been playing at a very high level. But can Energy kind of put that loss behind them that they had and, you know, kind of capitalize on the winning streak that they've been able to go on? They were able to take down a team in G2 that did kind of destroy Weibo later on in the tournament. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. But for Weibo, they are definitely the more talented of these two teams. You're looking at players that, you know, have the potential to be, you know, finals caliber players. Players like Light and Crisp that have gone on and on and on about the shy has been phenomenal at this tournament. It feels like he's finally starting to care about the games that he's playing. And Xiaohu, we know can play at a high level. Weiwei's been fine. He's really not been great at this tournament, but he's certainly good enough to be able to go up against a player like Contracts. It's all going to be about if Energy can continue to play as a team and draft really well, put themselves in an advantageous positions for them to be able to maybe overcome some of the skill deficits that they've faced over the course of this tournament already. It's definitely going to be intriguing. Both of these teams have had relatively easy roads up until this point. This is going to be a major test for both of them. As you know, I'm picking Weibo in this, but I think it's a lot closer than people are giving it credit for. I, I gave it, I think, 60-40. Maybe it was a 65-35 in yesterday's video. It was one of those two in favor of Weibo, but I certainly think Energy could win this series, and it's not out of the realm of possibility for Weibo to just completely shit the bed and lose three games against an Energy team that does have talent. And so it's going to be fun to watch, hopefully, and it's definitely intriguing because NA is back in the quarterfinals. Are they going to be able to do something about it? Well, if you're new to the channel, what we're going to do is go game by game talking about the advantages and the disadvantages that each team was able to generate. I'll be giving a player of the game and a dud of the the game for each individual game and at the end of the video and of the series I will be giving a player of the series to kind of tie everything up into a nice neat little bow but that means we get to start it off with game number one and the winner of game number one was... Weibo Gaming. They are going to take the first game of this series. Game number one is obviously super important, not quite as important as it was in the Swiss stage when it was still best of threes. Winning game one in a best of three is obviously essential because it really gives you that flexibility going into the back couple games. You don't want to be down 0-1 in those, but you certainly don't want to be down 0-1 in a best of five either. I've talked about it all year long when we've gone over the playoffs in every single major region. 
Losing game number one is like a shot, right? It's it's like an adrenaline shot into the winning team. It's fantastic for them because it gives them the confidence that, hey, we can beat them. Hey, we can outdraft them. Hey, we can put ourselves in a better position to win than the enemy can. And momentum and confidence is really big in League of Legends. It's a lot bigger than people give it credit for. And that's why I found this series to be really intriguing. But Weibo came out and they really were able to capitalize a little bit more on their advantages. Now, this was a close game. This was not a blowout by any means. This definitely had potential to swing the other way if energy had played some of these situations a little bit cleaner but what we're really seeing in a series like this is the difference between western macro and eastern macro if i'm being entirely honest i think that's kind of the real big takeaway from game number one for me uh quickly talking about draft because that's what we like to talk about first on this channel i actually think weibo does have a slightly better draft i think it's a little bit it's not like a dominant draft win by weibo or anything i think both teams definitely have options in this game but they did a couple of the things that i really like first of all, drafting Aphelios early on in the draft. I think certainly does give them, you know, pretty big ups. It gives them scaling, something that they can actually scale into the late game against Viego and Ori and Senna, which, you know, Energy obviously was kind of playing for that late game. And so Aphelios gives them an out to that. But they also draft a top side of the map that I think just generally wins. Uh, B1 Oriana, as per usual, gets countered. Obviously, some teams opt into counterpicking themselves when they see Orianna on the other side of the map with the Azir or something similar, but uh, Nico does really well into Orianna. Nico's a very strong pick in the current meta, and it's one that I've been very vocal about wanting to see more of and, and being pleased with kind of the results that we've gotten from her over the course of this tournament. Jiahu didn't exactly have the best game, but I think the pick in general is solid. And then Cassante into Renekton, I think, is Cassante favored, especially after what we've seen at this tournament, especially with the Shy going into Dokla. That's definitely a topside favored. Uh, Weibo Gaming. I do like the Senna Tom Kench, generally speaking, for energy. I think if they would have played it out a bit better, then maybe I would have liked it a bit more. But I like Tom and I like Senna in particular into like Aphelios plus Enchanter combos. I think Senna does a really good job of isolating that early and mid laning phase. And when you look at Weibo Gaming, their mid game kind of sucks. And a lot of that is because Milio can't really do a whole ton into Senna. Yes, he's going to be able to cleanse the Senna uh, root if you do end up landing it, but you can only cleanse one thing essentially on Milio. Uh, you can only press that button one time in some of those team fights. And so uh, Milio actually struggles quite a bit in my opinion. I don't love R5 Milio in this game, even if I do like the champion quite a lot. But that's my draft take aside. It didn't really matter that, you know, Weibo's scaling wasn't nearly as consistent as energies because Weibo was just playing so much better over the back half of this game. Player of the game is pretty cleanly going to go to light. I think some people might want to see this go to potentially even the shy, but I, I think light was pretty clearly the most important player in this game for Weibo in the back half. Uh, they really struggled in the early game to establish consistent tempo, and they were making a lot of bad plays during the part of the game where their comp is the weakest, which is the mid game. When you look at this comp that they've ended up assembling, they don't really have any way to skirmish in the mid game uh, at these objectives, and Energy knew that. They were trying to force a lot of these fights because that's when they really start to come online. That's when Ori starts to get better. That's when Viego starts to get better. Renekton hasn't fallen off yet. Senna can start to do something. You're going to be a lot stronger in a lot of these mid-game skirmishes, and we did see that throughout this game. It wasn't perfect from energy, but we did see them start to fight back. Where they really started to fumble and lose it is just their decision-making and their team fighting in the back half of the game, specifically around Baron, which was just atrocious. Both of these teams had pretty bad Baron setups, in my opinion, but Weibo's was significantly better, and that should really tell you how bad, how bad energies was in this game. Light was able to basically free hit in a lot of these team fights. The Aphelios ended up being incredibly clutch. I've been very, very, very high on Aphelios over the course of this tournament. You don't hear a lot of people continuously talking about him as a top 380 carry in the meta, but I think it is undisputable at this point. It's Zaya, it's Kaisa, it's Aphelios. I think those are your three best 80 carries in the game right now. Senna can do some interesting things. We've seen, you know, Caitlyn or Sivir or uh, other kind of niche picks, Ezreal, kind of be in the meta, but I really do think those are your three that are going to be the most consistent, and Aphelios continues to prove that basically every game he's played. Whether you want to play him with an Enchanter, which is kind of what we've seen for the most part over the course of this tournament, or you want to play him with an Engager, I think Aphelios is in a really good spot right now, and we continue to see that. Light has also been a lot better in the second half of this tournament. He really struggled in the first two days. I was starting to get concerned, because Light and Chris were definitely the weak point of Weibo at the beginning of the Swiss stage, but in the last, like, three or so series that they've ended up playing, uh, they've actually been the best part of this team. I mean, maybe not the best, because the Shy has been terrific, and we'll get to him in a second, but it's nice to see Light and Crisp get kind of back 
on track here. Chris was also good on Milio. Didn't have to do a whole ton, but looked good in the things that he did have to do. And the Shy continues to look awesome. Dokla wasn't awful this game, but the Shy was definitely better, and that's something that we're going to continue to monitor. The Shy has been fantastic at this tournament, the best player on Weibo Gaming. If he can keep that up, that's going to be a massive advantage, because I really do favor the bot lane for Weibo as well. And we saw what could happen when Zhao Hu does actually get a lead in the mid lane the first time these two teams played. And so for Weibo, this is a really nice game, number one. You would have liked to see them be a little bit more clinical, but you're basically just picking hairs at that point, because this was everything you wanted. And then for energy on the other side, it's just not good. Like, it's very not clinical. You did have moments where you were in this game, which is why I think it's even more frustrating that you had so many misplays in the back half, because there were, you, like, you really could have been able to win this game. You outscale Weibo, I think, pretty cleanly. I know a lot of people aren't looking at, you know, matchups and whatever, but Viego, Oriana, Senna is just great in team fights. I understand that there are options on Weibo's side to be able to shut them down, but I don't even think there's a lot of, like, super clean options, especially because I think Senna's really good in this matchup, and so you really look at Energy's comp and you're like, if this game goes late, if we get to some of these Baron fights, I actually favor them. And that's exactly what happened. We got to a lot of those fights from a relatively even state. It is certainly a state that Energy wasn't out of, and they just completely threw them away, which is certainly a frustrating thing. Dud of the game could go to two players in particular. I ended up giving it to Contracts on the Viego. This champion looked mega useless in this game. We've seen Viego pop off and do incredibly well, not only at this tournament, but throughout the summer split. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Viego is a bad pick because I genuinely do not believe that. I think Viego can be utilized at a very high level by really good junglers, but this just wasn't Contract's game. He was playing really passive in the early game, and by the time Viego started to hit some of those power spikes, he was not team fighting well. He mechanically misplayed a lot as well. And speaking of mechanical misplays, I mean, people are going to look at FBI in this one. And if you want to give Dutt of the game to FBI, I understand. I still think the Senna was more valuable this game than the Viego, which is why I'm giving it to Contracts. But you could definitely say that FBI played worse. This was not a good game number one from him. He's been relatively good at this tournament. Him and Ignar have certainly been solid enough. It's basically what they've been all year long, which is a bot lane that doesn't necessarily dominate games, but doesn't lose them either and can, you know, win in the late game. That's kind of been what FBI and Ignar have been all year. It just didn't. It didn't work in this game. FBI was miserable. He spent a billion gold on control wards, which usually people yell at supports for, but usually not any carries. And his positioning, his just ability to walk up and walk right into Cassante throughout this game, it's just disappointing. It's it's a lack of focus, and it's nerves. I, I have to imagine it is nerves. This is the first time that FBI has been in the quarterfinals of Worlds. He's obviously been to Worlds before on 100 Thieves, but they never made it out of the group stage, and so this is really the biggest test that he's had over the course of his career, and it's not a great first look. Contracts wasn't great. Palafox and Doko were fine. I think B1 Oriana could still get punished a little bit harder. If Xiaohu played a little bit better, I think that this is definitely... Definitely a circumstance where Ori is a little bit weaker in the early game, but in general, Energy's macro just looked so poor that I'm scared for what that means for the rest of this series. If they continue to play at that low of a level in the late game, then there's just no way they're going to be able to beat Weibo. For as much shit as we give them for being inconsistent, they do still have very good macro, and when they're on, they're, they're going to be consistent in the back half of games. It's just their early games that they end up flipping a lot of the time, but this was a really good early game from an early game comp on Weibo, and if they can do that again... 2-0 is going to be very difficult to come back from, but is Weibo going to be able to do that, or is Energy going to be able to tie the series up at one apiece? Well, the winner of game number two was... Weibo Gaming! They are going to take game number two! They're going to take this series lead going to, and oh, they're going to maintain it, I guess I should say... And uh, they're looking pretty darn good. Going up 2-0 in the quarterfinals is exactly where you want to be. Getting reverse swept is not particularly easy, and it's going to be a pretty big uphill climb from energy at this point. Going down 0-2, having to win all three of the final three games is just not a position you ever really want to find yourself in. And unfortunately for energy, it just looks like they don't have it today. I don't know if it's they don't have it or if Weibo is just too good, if they are just much better than anybody else that energy has gone up against, including G2. I don't know what it is, but they are getting outclassed in every single aspect of the game. Game number one was relatively close. There were some moments where they were keeping it alive. Dokla and Palafox in particular were looking all right, but it's just not been there for everybody else on this team, specifically the bot lane, who is just getting gapped by a ginormous margin. Now, a lot of people are going to sit here and talk about how shit FBI and Ignar are, but they've been really consistent over the course of this year. They've done a lot of really good things for energy. They are a big reason why this team is in the quarterfinals to begin with. Always good to keep that in mind, but also, let's give Light and Crisp some credit shall we? Let's not just say, oh, FBI and Ignar are garbage. Light and Crisp are awesome. 
They were a top three bot lane in the LPL this year, and that's not easy to do. It was, you know, a very, very difficult race, I will say. Um, and maybe not top three. It was very close. Maybe top four, right? Depending on how good you want to say the top esports bot lane was with just Jackie Love. But they were certainly in the conversation for being one of the best bot lanes in the LPL. And they were the reason this team got to Worlds. Full stop, like end of story. They were the best players on this team. It's really good to see them start showing up when it matters the most. I want to give positivity on this channel. That's always kind of been the goal instead of being super overly negative like most of the league community at most of the time is. Uh, but Light and Crisp deserve their flowers for how well they played in these series uh, so far at Worlds. But before we jump into individual gameplay, let's talk about the draft. And this is a very similar draft to game number one for both sides. It's a lot of similar picks. It's B1 Orianna. It's answering with Aphelios plus Rel and Nico and Milio and, you know, basically the same comp from Weibo, except you're switching out Cassante for Aatrox, which is more comfort for the Shy, even if I don't think the matchup is particularly phenomenal. And Energy, for their credit, does try something a little bit different. They go for scaling in the bot lane once again, but they go for something that can be a little bit more of a damage carry threat. In the Kai'Sa, love this pick. I think it's better than Senna. I like Senna. I love Kaisa. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Kaisa continues to be undervalued throughout this tournament because we see players that are just, quite frankly, not as good as their opponents getting gapped on Kaisa. And that's going to happen, dude. Like, sometimes... You know, I've talked about it at this tournament all the time up until this point. If you've watched all the videos, you're probably super annoyed by now. But, you know, Kaisa, every matchup where, that she gets where it's like, you know, an even 80 carry matchup or it's not against Zaya, she just destroys. And even sometimes when you're a worse 80 carry, we've seen her absolutely pop off. We've seen, you know, FBI in particular in that one of the previous games where he just got absolutely shut down against G2 and it didn't really matter because he just did a ridiculous amount of damage in the late game. Anyways, now it didn't quite go that way in this game, but I like Kaisa. Alistair is fine, theoretically. I see a lot of people talking about how bad it is into Milio and how R5 Milio is so strong in this draft. I don't really think it's that, like, broken or anything like that. Milio's fine. Milio can stop Alistair for a little bit, and then Alistair's going to be fine by the time you hit the late game. It's really not this hard counter that Reddit will make it out to be. Um, I think people are just looking for scapegoats and people like to claim draft if that's just the league community in general. I actually think this is relatively good for energy. They once again went for the more scaling route, the Orianna plus Kaisa route. Uh, which is fine. If you want to play for team fights, play for team fights. It's not exactly been the part of the game that you've done well over the course of these first two games, but it, you know, if that's what you want to do, uh, just don't give Weibo so many options in the early game. Nico continues to be a really strong pick for them, and it was a lot better here. I think Rel is very active for this team, and Aphelios is super consistent. The Shy is very good on Aatrox. There's just a lot of options for Weibo, specifically early on in games that they were able to take advantage of, and once again, player of the game is going to go to light. He continues to absolutely look phenomenal in this series, and this is what we wanted to see. We wanted to see Light come out and just be phenomenal for this team because he was kind of the MVP for them in the regular season. I actually would argue that it was Crisp. He was the one that I was giving a lot of the credit to, but this bot lane in general was the MVP for Weibo, and it hadn't been that way at this tournament. It was a lot more topside focused, specifically on the Shy for Weibo because of some of the performances he was putting in. But to see Light, you know, kind of get his feet back under him in this quarterfinal series, it's exactly what you were looking for if you are a Weibo fan. Now, it's not to say Light was bad in the Swiss stage. He had a couple of rough games in the first two days, but let's remember what I was talking about in their final series against Fnatic. Light absolutely smurfed that series as well. This has been, you know, a long time coming. It's kind of expected, and it's good to see the trend continue for a player that I really like. Crisp also has been really good. I don't even love Milio in these drafts. I love Milio as a champion. I think he's underutilized in the meta, but I don't think he's like a game breaker on R5 in a lot of these drafts in the same way that we've seen some R5s be really strong in other drafts, but Crisp just plays him super well, and him and Light have great chemistry, and they continue to execute. They're just outplaying FBI and Ignar by a ginormous margin, and it's showing through. I think Xiaohu had a much better game on Nico, significantly more consistent, actively tried to take advantage of the weak Orianna early game, and that's all you can really ask for from that champion. The Shy continues to be awesome on Aatrox, even into that Cassante matchup, which I still don't think is super Aatrox favored. Weiwei was very active on Rel. This was just a very nice Weibo gaming win. This was significantly better than their game number one, and they're sitting at 2-0 and for a reason now. And then for energy on the other side, they're just not good enough. Like, I, I, I hate to say it, but it just feels like they're getting outplayed at every single turn. Dokla, Palafox, they've been fine. Contracts really struggled in game one, but the vibe was a little bit more consistent in terms of the engage opportunities that he had but the bot lane's just not going to be able to survive, and it is what it is. Light and Crisp are simply too good. Dead of the game is going to go to FBI. I talk about this a lot 
on the channel. FBI is a player that I think gets more hate than he deserves, generally speaking, by the community. Even in my comment section, which I would generally describe as positive, I think most of the time, a lot of the comments that I get on my videos aren't X player is awful, but rather X player is really good and I'm really excited for them. I think that's the kind of community that hopefully I've been able to foster and that seems to kind of portray itself in the comment section. But even I get a lot of like FBI is super overrated, he's really bad comments. These are the kinds of games that they point to is, is games like this. But I, the reality of the situation is that FBI is a really good AD carry for Western teams, right? Like he is a very good ADC at the LCS. He's, he's just as good as a lot of the LEC bot laners, but Light and Crisp are on a different level. When you're going up against one of the top five-ish bot lanes in the world, FBI is just not going to be able to hold up against that. That's kind of been the MO for him over the course of his career is he's just not performed super well at Worlds. He didn't perform well at Worlds last year. It was the reason that people were really down on him. Going into 2023, I was against the grain. I was like, FBI is really good. He just had a bad World Championships. It's fine. And then now he's doing it again here at the 2023 World Championships. And it is worth noting that he was really good at this tournament up until this series. But it is clear once he goes up against like dominant talent, either it's nerves or either it's just you know, light is just too good for him. It's one of the two because it's just, it's not been very good. Both of the first two games were bad. Ignar's not doing much better. Alistair continues to really underperform at this tournament. I'm wondering if teams are going to continue to prioritize him or move on to some other champions. Rakan has basically completely fallen out of the meta, which I just don't understand at all. I get it in the sense of like, maybe, you know, if they want to pull out Milio, it's a little bit worse, but I take Rakan over Alistair in general most of the time. And it's just really interesting to see the adaptations that a lot of these teams have gone towards but Energy certainly has their back up against the wall now. They have to do something. This bot lane has to be able to survive, and you have to give your top side a chance to be able to win the game. That's what matters. One more game to keep yourself alive. You've got to take it game by game, but Weibo has the opportunity to close this out in a clean 3-0 sweep. Are they going to be able to do it? Well, the winner of game number three was... Weibo Gaming. They are going to take game number three. They're going to wrap up this series clean and quick with a 3-0 sweep. And they're going to be moving on to the semi-finals of Worlds. If I would have told you that Weibo Gaming was going to the semi-finals of Worlds just a couple of months ago, you either would have said, that's insane, what are you talking about? This team can barely beat Invictus Gaming. In fact, they didn't. Or you would have told me, of course they're going to the semi-finals of Worlds. They're going to win Worlds. It's just what happens with a team like Weibo. And yeah, honestly, both are kind of true. <laughs> like, uh, I was talking Weibo up all year long, but only in the context of, guys, don't worry about their losses. It's fine. They beat JD Gaming gaming twice in the regular season. They can beat anybody if they get hot. And that's exactly what they've done. They've gotten hot at the exact right time. They've had a pretty easy schedule up until this point. And now they are two series away from being world champions, which is just insane. Congratulations to them. But this is the end of the line for NRG, the last remaining Western team at this tournament, the last remaining North American team at this tournament. And I know there's going to be a lot of pessimism surrounding how they performed in this series. And trust me, I'm certainly not going to hype them up. I don't think they played well at all against Weibo in this series, but... Dude, Energy made quarterfinals. Like, if you would have told me that at the beginning of the tournament, I don't care if they got absolutely bodied in quarters. Like, they, they that's awesome. The fact that they got here is such an overachievement for a team, you know, that this is their first split back in the LCS. This is their first split back in pro play. Energy was not around in the spring split. For them to be in the quarterfinals of Worlds, that's such a major accomplishment for this org and for this team, for these players, that it's hard to be anything but optimistic about their future and just kind of how they performed, even if it wasn't very good good in this series. But before we jump into the actual analysis, we got to get into draft first and foremost. Kind of a shakeup in terms of draft, definitely different ideologies. Red side once again, putting themselves in a position to dominate the early game. Jace, Caitlyn, Heimerdinger, even Nar. Like, yeah, they want to win fast. They want to win early. They want to control the tempo of this game. That's what Weibo has done all three drafts in this series so far. And energy on blue side, to their credit, all three drafts have gone for scaling. They've gone for safety in the early game so that they can get to the team fight stage, which I just don't think is working. This is a team that I've praised over the course of this year for their drafts and for their ideologies in draft. Even at this tournament, I think in Swiss stage, especially against teams like G2, they did a really good job of establishing the kind of prio and the kind of game that they wanted to play and then executing really well on the win conditions that they set up for themselves. They just didn't do that very well in this series, in my opinion. And that's definitely at least a little bit disappointing considering they had all three games on blue side, which has been the dominant draft side, not only over the course of this tournament, but over the course of this year in general. And so, you know, for energy, it's definitely at least a little bit disappointing, but 
You know, they go for scaling. Uh, Rumble on B1, you know, Doko's been looking for it all tournament long. Uh, I think he felt comfortable, you know, taking it on R1 or B1, I should say. I'm lower on Rumble than I think a lot of other people are. I certainly don't think it's this, like, oh, you can't let it through kind of pick. I think, really, that's just Zaya for me in the meta right now. Oh, you cannot let Zaya through in that I truly do believe, but anything else I think is just, like, fine. Uh, Rumble is one of those things that I think is certainly counterable, and it was countered in this game. Gnar is a very good pick into Rumble. He basically shuts down everything that Rumble wants to do early, and as long as the Shy plays this out right, he's going to scale up relatively well with him and team fight just as strongly. And so, yeah, that's a pretty good matchup, and you're basically negating the B1 pick on the side of energy, which is never good. And then you're looking at, you know, some other things. Uh, Weibo ends up countering with Maokai plus Caitlyn. Uh, Maokai is another champion that I think is relatively overrated, but he is consistent, so it's fine. And the Caitlyn on R2, it's certainly risky, but you're up 2-0. You can afford to go for something like Caitlyn to try to dominate early. Energy senses that they want to try to win through that very quickly, so they go for Ezreal Karma. They say, screw it. You know, we're going to poke you out. We're going to sit here and, and, and not worry about Caitlyn in the early game. We're going to try to AFK this lane phase, and you know, Weibo doubles down with the Heimerdinger, but I actually really like Ezreal Karma, in theory, into Caitlyn. The problem here is that Light is better, and we'll talk about FBI. He played by far his best game of the series here in game number three I still see a ridiculous amount of hate for this game and you know again it's just FBI is the scapegoat for whatever team he's on that's just how he is it's what he's been over the course of his entire career but I think the rest of this draft is relatively fine Jace is good early into Yone and it's fine on R5 and you know Maokai Sedge is basically a push depending on where the lane states end up going and so you have options but energy again going for team fighting going for scaling and Weibo wanting to punish these lanes early the reason I think this is the best draft that Weibo has had all day long is because I think they punish their early lanes harder than they have in a lot of the other games I think Gnar in particular is such a dominant pick against the team that energy has drafted that there's really not a lot of answers to it and that's a problem for energy and we saw that in this game the shy was great but really where things started to get out of control was Zhao who showed up this was Zhao who's game he's gonna get player of the game phenomenal Jace performance we've kind of been waiting on a Zhao who breakout performance at Worlds because he's not really been all that spectacular at this tournament up until this point I still believe in Zhao who quite a bit I've defended him quite a lot and he's been better at Worlds in the past than people have given him credit for he's kind of gained this reputation of being an underperformer at this tournament I don't think that's necessarily the case I think he's been an average performer at this tournament which is sometimes just a little bit less exciting, right? But he's been average at this tournament as well. He's had good games, and this was certainly one of them. This was a dominant Jace performance. He's had some bad games, but if he can have more of the good ones, especially as this team starts to face some more stiff competition, that's going to be massive for Weibo, because they do like to play at least through mid lane tempo, even if they don't want to give Xiaohu a ridiculous amount of resources. But this Jace game was really nice. Player of the series, though, no brainer. It's going to go to light. I mean, he dominated this series. He was the one player that just stood out as being exceptional in terms of how he played. And, you know, I've been on the Light fan club for a long time. I talked about LNG a lot last year and how he was basically carrying that team with Tarzan and Doan B and a lot of these, you know, more famous players, I guess you could say. And he was really the one that got them close to Worlds. And he was the one that got them in the playoffs in the first place. He was a all pro caliber AD carry for that team last year. He gets a better team around him in Weibo. And he performs really well this year as well. He's just crazy consistent. One of the most consistent AD carries in the entire world. And he really decimated FBI in this series. It was a pretty big bot gap. Crisp is definitely a part of that. You know, three Enchanter games, Milio Milio Heimerdinger, which is fun, our first Heimerdinger of Worlds. But, you know, I don't think it was, like, ridiculously exceptional gameplay. I think Light played out of his mind, and Crisp was there to support him, which is fine. If Crisp is going to be more of a secondary player towards this team, which is not what he was in the regular season, then that's a good thing for Weibo. Because we know we can step up if they ask him to. To, especially on some of these more enchanter types of picks. The Shy has just been awesome across this whole tournament. He dominated this lane phase. And Weiwei's been solid enough. He's been the weak link, quote unquote, of this team, depending on how you see Xiaohu, but that's fine. Like, Weiwei as the weak link is just going to lose a little bit, and the rest of your team is going to win, and you're going to be able to win that game super easily. And so you feel good about Weibo Gaming. They're moving on to the semifinals. It's certainly not going to get easier from here. They're finally going to be tested at this tournament, but they've got a lot of reasons to believe that they can at least make that next series interesting no matter who they're facing. But for energy, this is the end of the road. They tried their best. They put in their best effort, and it just unfortunately was not going to be enough today. Weibo was simply too good. They lost 4-0 to them at this tournament. 
And I think it's just a talent gap, right? As much as I love energy and as much as I try to push North American talent being solid, the East is just that much farther ahead. The reason that energy got out of this is because they didn't really have to play a ton of Eastern teams in the Swiss stage. And that was the same case for basically every Western team at this tournament. If they were going to get out of the Swiss stage, they were going to do it because they played other Western teams. The gap is massive. And I think that it continues to prove that here because energy is really maybe the best Western team. I mean, G2 probably still is, but... Energy destroyed G2. It is at least worth considering them in the conversation for that role. And it just was not particularly close in this series. Dead of the game for game three is going to go to Palafox. Just not a good game from him on the Yone. Definitely more his style. This was definitely a comfort draft. Basically, everybody on the team going for the things that they played the most successfully over the course of their career. Dokla on something he can play super aggro on the top side, and the Rumble was a big pick for him back in Academy. And then Palafox on a melee, Assassin in the mid lane, and Yone, FBI, on something that can play safe, like the Ezreal, Ignar on a Karma that he can play really aggro on, Contracts on the Sejuani that he's dominated on this year. It really was a comfort draft for Energy. It just didn't end up working out. I think F uh, FBI and Ignar probably had their best game of the series on the Ezreal Karma. This was a relatively okay match and they did neutralize a lot of what the Caitlyn and the Heimerdinger wanted to do from that draft phase, which is fine. You're still going to see people clamoring that FBI was the worst player in this game, and that's fine. Um, you know, people love to scapegoat FBI, even if, you know, I'm not going to try and sit here and say he wasn't the worst player in this series because games one and two were really bad from him, but he certainly wasn't the only bad player in this series. It, it's worth noting that FBI, I, I don't know, I just, I have to, I have to defend him because golly, he just gets so much hate no matter what team he's on, no matter what he does. He just gets so much hate all the time. So I feel like I have to defend him, but you know, he didn't play well in this series. So it is worth noting, but Palafox and Dokla finally started to crumble. They were the two kind of you know, surviving in the first couple of games, and they did not survive in this game number three. They played more aggressive picks, and they were punished for it by their more aggressive lane opponents' contracts. You know, getting an NA team eliminated on Sejuani, continuing the trend that has basically been throughout this whole tournament. Energy tried some stuff this game. It just didn't end up working out. But like I said at the beginning, this is already such a positive year for Energy. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do this offseason. I, I hear they're going to try to retain most of this roster, and if that's the case, good for them, because clearly they have something with these guys, especially the top side. And I like FBI a lot. And Ignar definitely stepped up down the stretch of the year, but energy in general has just been such a major positive for the NA scene. It's been such an injection of positivity in a region and in a league that has severely lacked positivity from the fan base over the past two, three plus years. And, you know, I'm just happy for them. Hopefully this is the start of something that we can continue to build on because this was a really fun experiment from them. And then for Weibo, Semifinals are coming up. They're going to play the winner of tonight's games between Gen G and Billy Billy, and both of those they're going to be underdogs in, but we've seen what Weibo can do when they go up against some of the best teams in the world. That's when they really put on their best performances. This is a team that absolutely can surprise, and I wouldn't be shocked if they were more competitive than people expected in the next round. All right, but that is going to do it for my quarterfinals day one overview and analysis video. We covered Energy versus Weibo. Weibo moving on to the semifinals. I do hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be covering Gen G versus Billy Billy Gaming tomorrow night. The winner of that will obviously be facing Weibo Gaming. I'm excited to cover that. But if you did enjoy today's video, leave a like. It really does mean a lot to me. It lets me know you guys are enjoying the content. And it does help get this video out to a lot more people, which I'm always very appreciative of. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We're covering every single series at worlds daily on this channel and so if you want constant updates on what's going on and then you know with off season right around the corner we've already got a lot of moves being confirmed and locked in we're going to be covering all of those on this channel as well if you are excited for that as well uh, hit subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when you get all those videos in your subscription box but with all that being said i hope you all are having a great day i hope you continue to have a great day and i will see you all later